Welcome back to One Dimensional Kinematics, The Adventures of Jim and Cindy. And this is our last section having to do with graphs and kinematics. Alright, so we are doing graphs now. Usually this is stuff that students have a hard time with slash do not like. But interpreting graphs is very important just in life. Uh, so we have three sets of graphs. We have position versus time graph, all of these. Velocity versus time graph. Acceleration versus time graph. Okay, so... What we want to do is we want to match each of the position versus time graph with each of the velocity versus time and acceleration versus time. So let's look at this position versus time. What we see with this one is as time goes on, as time goes on, it's going to be covering more and more ground dramatically. So at the beginning, it doesn't cover that much ground, but you can see at the end here, just with a little bit of time, it covers a lot of ground. It goes from this position all the way to this position. But if you look from here to here, from this time to this time, it only covers a little bit of ground, okay? So what we can see is it's covering more and more ground as time goes on. So what that means is it's accelerating in the positive direction. So let's look at this. This is going to be something that's accelerating in the positive direction. So what that means is it's getting, it's going to be getting faster and faster and faster and faster. So if this is velocity versus time, it's getting faster and faster and faster and faster over time. Okay. And what that also means is that it is accelerating. It has this constant acceleration, which is B. Mm -hmm. All right, C. All right, let's look at this now. So what we see is at the beginning, in a short amount of time, it goes pretty far. However, later on, in a, in a, in a long amount of time, it barely goes anywhere. So what we can see is that it's slowing down. It's kind of like slowing down to a stop. So at the beginning, it's going really fast, but then it's slowing down. So let's look over here, something that's gonna be start going really fast at the beginning, like this one's going really fast at the beginning and slowing down. But this one also shows it goes in the negative direction, so it can't be that one. This one over here shows it's going fast at the beginning and it's slowing down. Over here is gonna be going zero miles an hour. So that's zero miles an hour, so it's, it's going fast and slowing down. So it's gonna be C. Again, what we notice with this one is it has a negative acceleration. So it's slowing down, it has a negative acceleration. So we're just gonna call this one A. All right, let's look at C. C looks a bit more complicated. So again, at the beginning, in a short amount of time, it goes pretty far. Later on, kind of in the middle, in a certain period of time, it barely moves, it barely moves. So what we see is it's going pretty fast at the beginning, slows down over here, it's almost like flat, it's almost like flat over here. And then again at the end, in a short amount of time, it goes pretty far. So we can see at the beginning it's speeding up, it's slowing down, and what we start to see is it actually starts to speed up in the negative direction. It goes, it goes pretty fast and then slows down, and it starts to speed up in the negative direction. Uh, so what we see, oops, sorry, this is part of this, B, C, A, and then so this one is going to be, again, it's speeding up, it's fast at the beginning and then slows down, just like with that B, fast at the beginning, slows down, and then starts to go faster in the negative direction, it starts to go faster in the negative direction, okay, so it's going to be A. And then lastly, again, it has this negative slope, of, so the acceleration is going to be negative. So we have this D right here. Part D, what we see with D is, you know, it has this, um, we can see that at the beginning, in a certain period of time, it moves a certain distance. And even later on towards the middle, in that same period of time, it moves a certain distance. So it, even though it's moving, it has this linear motion, meaning it's moving with constant velocity. And then at this point right here, what it does is it takes a sharp turn and starts to go in constant velocity, but in the negative direction. 
So we want to see something with a constant velocity. And we see that this right here, it has a constant velocity. And then, out of nowhere, it suddenly starts to go a constant velocity in the negative direction. So constant velocity, and then nowhere, constant velocity in the negative direction. So it's going to be d, b. And over here, since it's constant velocity, that means no acceleration at the beginning. But when it makes this sharp turn, it changes its motion really quickly. So it has this spike in acceleration, and then again, no acceleration at all. So again, constant velocity, no acceleration, sharp turn, so it's a change real quick. And then again, no acceleration. Okay, so try to intuitively understand it or these problems can get pretty difficult. Okay, next question. Uh, from the following graph, find the acceleration of the motion. So, okay, a few things we wanna do. So, this is the beginning, this is the end, this is the time, and this is the velocity. So, in physics we know acceleration We know acceleration is equal to V final minus V initial over T. So we can kind of put that formula down here. Acceleration is equal to V final minus V initial over T. So we can kind of just put it, if we want to look, find the acceleration of these two points, we just kind of plug it in. You know, what's the final velocity? It goes from two to 10 meters per second. What's the initial velocity? Well, it starts at two meters per second. So two. And how long did it take to get from that to that? It took 40 seconds. Okay, and once we do that, what we get is uh, the acceleration of the motion is 0 0.2 meters per second squared. What you're going to notice is this is just a slope. If you find the slope of this, it gives you the acceleration. The, the rise over the run. And this is the same thing. This is the rise over the run. Uh, find the displacement of the motion. So this is where it gets a bit more tricky. So let's kind of write down everything we know. And we know that the initial velocity equal to two meters per second. We know the final velocity is equal to 10 meters per second. We know the time, which is equal to 40 seconds. And also now we know the acceleration, which is 0 0.2 meters per second squared. Once you do this, what you can do is you can just look at your formula sheet and you can just plug it into this formula right here. So I could just do displacement is equal to V initial T plus one half AT squared. And I get that the displacement is equal to V initial, which is two T, which is 40, plus 1 half A, which is 0 0.2, T, which is 40 squared. Do some math. So that's one way of doing it. Or what we can also do is just find the area under the curve. So we can find what this area is under the curve. Oh, maybe I should have done this in different colors. And I know that this is gonna be two times 40, which is equal to 80. And this one up here, which is one half base, which is 40, times the height, which is eight. Two to 10, which is eight. And then I get eight times 40 times 0.5, 160. And then I get 160 plus 80 equals 240. So two ways you could do this, you could do, find the area under the curve, or you could just try to find the information you know and then solve it that way.
So those are two ways to do these kind of problems. Okay, next example. Using the graph at the right, determine the average acceleration of the car. Again, when we have the velocity versus time graph, what we're doing is we're just, we just need to find the slope or we're gonna be using the formula acceleration equals V final minus V initial over time. So we get acceleration is equal to the final velocity, which is right here, which is zero minus 25 over T, which is 50. And what we get is it is equal to negative 0 0.5 meters per second squared. And um, that should make sense because it has a negative slope, so it's gonna have a negative acceleration. Okay, so this is kind of something that should be testing you. Uh, now that we did everything, should, you should be able to do this one. It says find the acceleration and the displacement for each segment. So I'll do the acceleration first. So A, acceleration is gonna be the rise four over the run two. So what I get is two meters per second squared. B, acceleration is gonna be the rise goes from four to two. So it's gonna be negative two over the run two and you get negative one meters per second squared. I'll do C over here. Okay. C is gonna be the rise. There is no rise, so it's just zero over the time, two, four. So this is gonna be zero meters per second squared. And then D. The rise, well, it goes from 2 to negative 2, so it's going to be negative 4 over 8 to 10, so that's 2. So it's going to be negative 2 meters per second squared. Now, let's do the displacement. What I'm just going to do, uh, what I find e easier is just finding the area under the curve. So this, is, for part A, it's going to be 1 half the base, which is 2 times the height, which is four. Remember the area under a triangle is one half base times height. So I'm gonna get four meters. Now let's look at the area under the curve for B. We have to do this in two segments actually. We have to do one half base, which is two, height, which is also two, plus we have to find this, which is this Rectangle just base times height, so it's going to be 2 times 2, or I guess it's a square. So this is going to be equal to 6 meters. C is this rectangle right here. Um, base, which is 4. Height, which is 2, which is equal to 8 meters. And D, so the area on the curve is going to be this and this, so we have to do two triangles. One half base, which is one, times height, which is two, plus one half base, which is, oh base, sorry, is which is one, and height, which is negative two. Okay, and this is gonna give us zero meters. Okay, on to our last problem for this chapter. What can we say about the speed in the following graph? So this is a velocity versus time graph and we see it starts with a speed of like negative 2.5, goes to zero and then goes to four meters per second. So what we can say is it's going from like negative 2.5 to zero at the beginning and then it's going to zero to about four. So what we can say is the first, it has a certain speed and then it decreases to zero and then it increases to four meters per second. So the speed decreases, then increases. 
All right, guys, uh, thank you for doing this chapter with me. If you saw the whole thing, great job. I hope you enjoyed the story of Cindy and Jim, and you'll see many more if you uh, follow me along. So thank you, guys.